Hey folks, welcome to Board Game Casual. Like many, Settlers of Catan was my gateway into modern board games. In fact, for a long period, my friends and I considered ourselves Catan players rather than board gamers because this is all we played for years before realizing there was a whole world of other board games out there. In this video, I thought it would be fun to take a nostalgic trip down memory lane and look at the first five games I played after Catan. We'll talk about what my thoughts were on each game at the time, what my thoughts are now, and if these games have stood the test of time and are games that I still play today. Let's get into it. Dominion Big Box. The first game I was introduced to after playing nothing but Catan for years was Dominion. One of my closest friends was pulled out of his Catan shell when he was gifted a copy of the Dominion Big Box. And subsequently, he had us over to play. This was my first experience with deck building, and the game just clicked for me. In just a few turns, buying new powerful cards and making my deck stronger, I immediately got hit with that, oh, this game is good. Feeling. I like the game so much, I immediately ordered myself a copy from Amazon. Dominion became the new game we'd play instead of Catan when we got together. We even discovered an online version that allowed us to play remotely whenever we had spare time. More importantly, however, this was the game that really opened our eyes that there were other board games out there and jump started the evolution of our Catan nights into game nights. As time went on and we played more and more, I started to find that Dominion became all about the metagame of recognizing the optimal strategy when analyzing the initial layout of the cards in the market. And then the rest was just sort of executing. So it started to become a little less interesting. It also wasn't the best game when you have a mix of people who are new to the game and people who play a lot. Anyone figuring out the game for the first time will be stomped by those who are more familiar with the cards. We also started to discover a lot more games that had deck building in them as a mechanism, and Dominion eventually took a back seat. To be honest, it's been several years now since I've played it. Number two, Carcassonne. The second game I snagged was Carcassonne. At the time, it was really common to hear, if you love Catan, you'll love Carcassonne. And from the videos I could find online, it seemed like it would be a good fit with the friends I was normally having over to play Catan, and a great new option for game nights. Easy to teach, easy to learn, not too heavy. The first night we played it, we even hosted a French theme night and had people dress French and serve some French foods just to build the game night atmosphere around the theme. Overall, I found Carcassonne to be okay. I thought the game was fine and I enjoyed my plays, but I didn't find the game as fun as Catan. It just didn't grab me. As the years went on, this game quickly moved to the bottom of the shelf. Number three, Battle Line. The third game I got was Battle Line. I was looking for a little two-player game to bring with my girlfriend and I on a trip over the holidays that year. And I think I found this game on what was probably a pretty dated best two-player board games video. Battle Line was another game that's okay. The gameplay is pretty basic, kind of a rummy style game. And the simplistic production didn't really draw me or my girlfriend in. Especially compared to something like Lost Cities, which I got a few months later, and Lost Cities basically permanently shelved Battle Line for us. Fast forward to today, I couldn't even tell you the last time we even played Lost Cities. To be honest, I'm not sure I'll ever play Battle Line again. I still keep it around for nostalgia, but it's at the bottom of the shelf and it might get cold the next time I need to make more room for games. Hanami Koji would be the game that I'd reach for these days if I wanted to play this type of game. But Hanami Koji comes in a much more distilled, elegant, crunchy, four-turn game. Number four, King of Tokyo. King of Tokyo was my first foray into a dice-chucking battle royale. This game was all the rage at the time. So popular that there was even a version made specifically for Target. And I thought the game looked like a lot of fun. 
the Yahtzee system was completely new to me. So that ability to re-roll whichever dice you want up to three times was a very exciting mechanic. It definitely gave you a feeling of having more agency, especially compared to Catan, where you roll the dice once and you get what you get. King of Tokyo quickly became my game to introduce to non-board gamers. It was always well received. The presentation is exciting, but approachable. It's easy to teach and learn, uh, and the turns are very snappy. Yes, the game does have player elimination, but the game plays pretty fast, so no one eliminated was ever sitting there for too long before the game ends. And even if you get knocked out, it's exciting to see how the game plays out between the other players. And while this is a every-man-for-himself battle, it's low stakes and lighthearted. I'm not a huge fan of Take That, but what's great about this game is that it has rules-determined targeting rather than player-driven targeting. If you're outside of Tokyo and you roll attacks, that always does damage to the monster in Tokyo. If you're the monster in Tokyo and you roll attacks, that does damage to all the monsters outside of Tokyo. It's nice and clean. There isn't that fear of people unfairly ganging up on a particular player. And instead, it makes a big part of the strategy figuring out when to come in and out of Tokyo. Of all the games on this list, King of Tokyo is by far the game with the most plays and the most staying power. It was only a few months ago where I brought it out for some friends who are in town who hadn't played it, and for the first time I started to realize maybe I've cooled on this game a bit. It's probably not a game I'll proactively bring out anymore, at least for a while. I need a little bit of time away from it. Number five, Caverna. The fifth game I played after Catan was Caverna. And this game blew my mind, especially as a game which was probably the most comparable to Catan in terms of collecting resources and turning them into buildings or upgrades. I mean, the fact that you could just choose whatever resources you want on your turn without having to roll dice and hope you'd roll the resources you want, this seemed revolutionary. It also never felt like you got stuck with a bad turn. Someone may have beaten you to the items that you really wanted, but there was always something else good to choose from on the board. The game production was also pretty mind-blowing, at least for me at the time. Wood components that look like branches, ore that look like ore, food that look like pumpkins and sheeps and cows. I like that there were a lot of different strategies you could use in the game too. Do you want to focus on livestock production? Do you want to go questing? Do you want to focus on building up your cave and making more population or maybe a little bit of everything? All are viable options for scoring points. When I first played Caverna, this was a game that felt like a major step up in strategy and depth from Catan and really all of the games that we've been playing so far. It was the first game where I thought, why would I ever play Catan over this game? I even went as far as buying my first third-party box organizer to make the setup and teardown of the game easier. Eventually, after several plays, the problem I found with Caverna was that I just kept falling into playing the same strategy in every game. The game has some setup variability built in, but as you become more familiar with the tiles and the resource spots, there are definitely specific things that are more powerful that you want to target as the key to winning the game. This was also compounded by what I would consider to be a rookie mistake, in that this was one of the first games where I actively read through strategy guides online. In a way, that's like getting a cheat code. And at least for me, it ended up taking a lot of fun out of the game and not something I've ever done since. But even that aside, the constant anxiety this game gives you of having to feed your dwarves was also mentally taxing. So while my friends and I enjoyed our time with Caverna, it too has been something we haven't played in ages now. I look back at the game fondly, but it also feels complete, kind of a been there, done that. And it would be really hard to choose putting this game out on the table compared to something new or still fresh. So looking back, 
which of these five games am I still actively playing today? Well, up until a few months ago, King of Tokyo, but honestly, right now, none of these. Which of these games, if any, would I actively recommend or not recommend today? The hardest game for me to recommend from this list would probably be Battleline. It's certainly not a bad game, especially if you like Rummy-style games, but it just feels outdated and simplistic. I can't imagine that I'd ever reach for this game over Lost Cities or Hanami Koji, or better yet, a totally different two-player type of game like Targi. The Dominion Big Box is tough to recommend simply because of the awkward box size. It doesn't really fit in a calic shelf. The normal size Dominion boxes fit much better. The big box is nice because it gives you plenty of room to store additional expansions, but I also just don't see myself buying any more Dominion. Again, the game itself is great, just my opinion on the logistics of this particular version and its box size. The easiest to recommend to new gamers would be King of Tokyo. In fact, I've bought this game as gifts for people, especially if they're a family with kids. Which of these games would I be most excited to play right now if someone else wanted to? Right now, I'd probably be most excited to play Dominion. Over the years, I've played so many other games that have deck building in them, it would be nice to go back full circle and see how I like a pure deck building game like Dominion by comparison. It also plays pretty quickly, and it's easy to uh, teach and relearn. It also seems like Dominion's been having a resurgence lately. I hear a lot of people talking about this game again. The game I'd be second most excited to play is Caverna. It's tough for me to ever want to pull this one out on the table compared to playing something new, but I'd easily get on board if someone else wanted to play it. Honestly, I really need to play it again as a litmus test just to see if I still like it enough to keep or if I should free up some additional space by culling it. This is a big box and takes up a lot of space. I hope you enjoyed this trip down memory lane and a look back at the first five games I played after Catan, which opened the doors for me into the world of board games. And if you're someone who's still only playing Catan and looking to bridge out, I hope this helps give you an idea of what to try next. Honestly, these are all solid games. I certainly wouldn't turn down playing any one of these five games if they were the only game around. I'd also love to hear your opinions on these games down in the comments. Have you played any of these games and moved on? Or are these still games you play to this day? Let me know. Thanks for watching, thank you for liking, thank you for subscribing, and I'll see you next time here on Board Game Casual.